In today's Black Clover video, we show you how Lucius actively manipulated Julius Navacrono to do certain things that work towards Lucius' ultimate goal. We show you important events that Lucius probably caused. Before the plot twist, they seem to be normal events. But now we know that everything is part of a bigger picture. Also, only a small percentage of the people who watch our videos are actually subscribed. So, if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. Please enjoy this video. Let's go! Before we begin, we need to decide which version of Julius Novacrono we are looking at in this video, or rather why it doesn't matter which version is true, so that no matter what we say, it fits all versions. Therefore, everything we say must also be true. There are exactly three possibilities. We have to understand that Julius' inner monologue clearly shows that he is innocent, no matter if he is actually Lucius or maybe even Astaroth. So either Julius is Lucius with altered memories while he has imposed certain rules on himself to work towards his ultimate goal. Or Julius is Astaroth and Lucius has altered the Time Devil's memory so that Astaroth believes he is a human named Julius Novacrono, while Lucius has actively manipulated Julius' decisions. Or Julius is a third person besides Astaroth and Lucius, perhaps a human who has a contract with Astaroth, or just a random person Lucius has possessed and consequently used and manipulated so that he himself will not be exposed as an intruder. The second and third possibilities are pretty equal for this video because that will mean that Lucius could have actively influenced all of Julius' decisions without him realizing it. And of course without him being Julius himself, suppressing his own memories. Because that would be impossible unless he could see many decades into the future, and therefore could have prepared himself perfectly for everything that was going to happen. In this way he could have manipulated himself so that he knew what he has to do in the future and when exactly he had to do it. This would mean that he knows exactly what will happen without anyone being able to change the future. Of course, that's not possible, even if we have confirmation that he can indeed see into the future. Just not several decades, that's just too much, I think we can all agree. But that's the problem we have with the first possibility, that Julius himself is Lucius with altered memories. Because even if he could have imposed certain rules on himself, like the fatherly feelings for Yami and William, or his interest in Asta, there are just far too many decisions that Julius made in situational moments that turned out in favor of Lucius' plan, so that we can really assume that Lucius knew all this was going to happen. For example, he suddenly knew that the Eye of the Midnight Sun would attack the capital. Julius suddenly went to look for the enemy hideout out even before the attack happened. Julius had to do this in order to set the whole plot in motion with the gathering of the magic stone so that the Eye of the Midnight Sun could eventually reincarnate all the elves, which would then lead to the separation of William and Patry, which in turn was necessary for the beginning of the Clifford ritual. 15-20 years ago, Lucius simply could not have known that the raid on the capital would take place on that very day, so he could have prepared Julius' action for that particular event. So he must have been actively controlling Julius that day somehow, which means Julius can't be Lucius unless someone else was helping Lucius by manipulating Julius in the way Lucius needed at that moment. For example, Marx, because he has memory magic and could use it to influence Julius the way Lucius wants. And with that, it's possible that any situation in which Julius made a decision that ultimately turned out to be in favor of Lucius' plan was actually actively influenced even if Julius is Lucius without memories. In this case, Marx could have taken Julius in the direction direction that Lucius planned from the beginning. Thus, we have at least proven the possibility that any decision Julius made could have been actively influenced by Lucius or one of his people, besides the things that were put into Julius' head from the beginning of the manipulation. I would say we start with the most obvious, which is that Julius Novacrono invited Yami and William into his squad. The way Julius treated William and Yami does not suggest a direct decision manipulated by Lucius or someone else, but rather seems to be a pattern of behavior that Julius follows without understanding why he acts the way he does. Yami and William are pretty much the main reason why Lucius had to take such a high position as Wizard King in the Clover Kingdom, and that is to prepare for the Clifford ritual and thus keep an eye on Yami and William until the ritual takes place. So this is something that Lucius could have put in Julius' head from the beginning without knowing the future. What I'm saying is that while the act of inviting both of them at the same time may have been an active decision by Lucius that led Julius to do so at the moment, Julius 
Julius must have also been given the idea of fatherly feelings for Yami and William. Julius not only invited them but did everything he could to make them feel comfortable and welcome. To accomplish this, he must have basically adopted both of them. He actually became something like their father. Yami didn't have a family from the moment he was stranded in Clover Kingdom and William was abandoned because it was believed that he was cursed due to the scar on his face. Because of this, no one in his family wanted anything to do with him. He was even forced to grow up in the Forsaken Realm, basically like a peasant. So both Yami and William had basically no father at that time. Julius then filled that empty place. He made William a mask so that people would accept him and taught Yami the local language so that he could be accepted by the citizens of the Clover Kingdom. Not only that, but he insisted that both of them would only join his squad, the Grey Deer. The Lucius made sure that William and Yami remained under his control becomes clear when we look at what happened when he was promoted to Wizard King. The position of Wizard King was essential to manipulate events the way Lucius needed them to be and so there was no way he could allow Julius to reject the position of Wizard King. But by becoming the Wizard King he would also have lost direct control of Yami and William to whoever would become the next captain of the Grey Deer. So the best solution would be to make them both captains of their own squads so that they would both be directly under his control as the Wizard King as they were when he was the captain of the Grey Deer. But the fatherly feelings for the two go far beyond that. Even after William was exposed as a traitor and even partly as the leader of the Eye of the Midnight Sun responsible for so many deaths, Julius chose not to punish William at all, while at the same time sentencing all members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun who had done much less harm, but still in the name of William and Patry to prison terms. Most of them even ended up helping the humans win the war against the elves which William did not, and yet William was not punished. It's quite clear that this is a very unjust decision. Such a thing is not possible with active manipulation, since it's not a direct decision, but rather a feeling Julius has towards William that forces him to make such irrational decisions on his own. These are the same feelings that caused him to lose to Patri and thus lose the magic stones, making the reincarnation of the elves possible in the first place. Julius simply could not hurt William's body even if he was fighting Patri at the moment. In reality, Julius simply did not understand that William was actually only important for the ritual and therefore must not be harmed under any circumstances. Everything else Julius felt for William was manipulated by Lucius and does not correspond to true feelings even if those feelings felt genuine to Julius. However, the fact that Julius brought the magic stones to the meeting with William, even though he suspected William of being Patry, is something else entirely and has nothing to do with his fatherly feelings for William. This will then be one of the actively influenced decisions manipulated by either Lucius or Marx to achieve the long-term goal of creating the Cliffith Tree. So Lucius or whoever got Julius to bring the magic stone to the meeting with William knew that William would reveal himself to be Patry, the leader of the Eye of the Midnight Sun and that the legendary decisive battle between Patry and Julius will then take place. And if you remember during that fight, Marx said something that indicated his involvement. When Julius supposedly died, Marx said that this should not have happened, as if everything else that happened was planned, but in the process Julius or Lucius should not have died. So maybe Marx really is involved and maybe even the one who actively influenced Julius' decisions for Lucius when Lucius had not yet awakened. We will be doing a separate video on Marx in the coming weeks, maybe even next week, where we will explain in detail everything about this idea that he is a traitor. Before my partner continues, please take a moment to leave a like and check out our new channel where we upload all kind of funny stuff. We've already posted two videos. The link is in the comments. It would be great if you help us to get monetized on the new channel. Just watch both videos for that. It would be a great help for us to one they have enough resources for an editor so we can make even more bigger and better videos for you. This is our goal, thank you. The whole fight between Patri and Julius was planned from the beginning, with the goal of Julius losing the magic stones to Patri so that Patri and William would separate so that William could then be used for the Clifford ritual is obvious. Because when we look at the first appearance of the Dark Triad, Zidane asks why they waited for six months before attacking, which suggests that something that was part of the plan happened six months ago, which made everything possible for the Clifford ritual. This in turn means that they knew about what Lysias had had been doing in the Clover Kingdom all these years and were also kept up to date, indicating that they somehow received information about the latest status of their plan in the Clover Kingdom, the person who might have kept them informed could then have been Nacht. Even though Nacht and the Dark Triad never met in person, there are still ways to keep each other informed without ever seeing each other. If you are confused as to why Nacht, then you should definitely check all the videos we've made lately. We have the theory that not only Lucius is a traitor in the Kingdom that there are several people working with him. Anyway, 
there are a lot of more hidden signs to how Lucius manipulated Julius into doing certain things to achieve the long-term goal of creating the Clifford Tree. Speaking of Nacht, last time we explained how Nacht was actively involved in the creation of the Clifford Tree. But in order for that to happen, Julius obviously had to have somehow came into contact with Nacht first, or perhaps even be responsible for the Faust family tragedy, so that Nacht ended up alone and thus could become a spy for Julius. Because the profession of a spy corresponds to the typical stereotype of a person who has no friends and family. This perfectly fits with Nacht. And indeed, it is very strange that Julius invited both Morgan, Nacht's twin brother, and Yami, Nacht's best friend, but not Nacht himself, not even considered him. Of course, we have no proof, but it is entirely possible that Lucius, or one of Lucius's people, was the one who somehow informed Morgan of his family's secret, so that Lucifugus could then kill them all and leave Nacht all alone. Then Lucius could then somehow promise Nacht to revive. Morgan with an undying body, just as he promised Zenon he would do with all of humanity. In my opinion, that fits perfectly well. But Lucius not only focused on Yami and William and everyone close to them, but given his plan, he must have manipulated Asta in some way as well. And of course, we have the evidence of that, aside from Nacht being the one who voiced Asta and made Asta the ultimate weapon to defeat Lucifero in the Spade Kingdom, all probably on Julius's orders. Julius was the one who was actively involved in making Asta stronger and may have even protected him from time to time. When Julius was on the black market at the same time as Asta, he tested Asta's abilities. Perhaps Lucius wanted to make sure whether Asta was really the person he had been waiting for all these years. And when he had the confirmation, he decided to send Asta to the dungeon. And we all know what happened there. Asta received his new sword, which he needed to become strong enough to defeat Lucifero one day. But not not only that, it also makes it seem like Julius actually saved Asta's life in the fight against Mars. Asta was almost killed by Mars if you know hadn't somehow managed to stop time. This moment made no sense at all because you know cannot stop time and self has never shown a similar ability either. One can consider that this was just her awakening, but that's a stretch in my opinion. I think there must be a much more logical explanation. For example, that Lucius was the one who protected Asta's life at that moment so that Yuno know, could save him. After the victory of the Clover Knights against the Diamond Kingdom in the dungeon, Julius invited everyone to a banquet and then disappeared. As we have already explained, here we notice something very interesting. During the raid on the capital, it was reported that the enemy used magic that blocks transmission spells. In other, it was reported that the enemy used magic that blocks transmission spells. In other words, communication spells. Here we can use the same method that Damnatio used to expose Julius. The only person known to have ever used the ability to block communication spells was Julius Novocrono. When he was searching for the hideout of the Eye of the Midnight Sun during the capital raid, he blocked the communication spell so that Mars could not contact Julius, which happened at the same time when all communication spells throughout the kingdom stopped working, which was the reason why the reinforcement from outside the noble realm did not arrive, making the raid possible in the first place. Then, when Julius finally lifted the spell that was blocking the communication spell, Mars was able to get through to Julius, and the crazy thing is that at the same time it was reported that the communication spells in the Clover Kingdom started working again. This time it was not called transmission spells but literally communication spells. The same spell that Julius can block. So Julius blocked the communication spells and at the same time the Clover Kingdom could not communicate because someone had interfered with the transmissions. And then Julius cancels the spell that blocked the communication spells. And at the same time the Clover Kingdom is suddenly able to communicate again with communication spells. It is so obvious that Julius has unknowingly helped the Eye of the Midnight Sun. And last, the fact that Julius returned as a child. At first glance, it seems to have been a decision that Lucius must have made in order to survive. But upon closer inspection, it quickly becomes 
clear that Julius had not been able to face a single devil since then, due to the fact that he apparently lost his magic and became practically useless on the battlefield. Considering this, it is quite possible that this was also more or less planned. He as the wizard king could not protect the kingdom against Zagreb, nor could he fight against the Dark Triad when Yami and William were kidnapped, nor could he participate in the war in the Spade Kingdom. And why? There are two reasons for this. First, any devil would immediately recognize Astaroth's magic, not only by the magic itself but also by the devil mana. We call it devil mana, but in Black Clover, in the world of the living, it is actually called negative mana because it is noticeably more sinister and simply comes from the underworld. But the point is that any devil would have immediately recognized the mana as what we call devil mana and along with the Thai magic, it is obvious that any devil would recognize Astaroth. Lucius couldn't let that happen and also he couldn't let Julius fight someone who contributed to the creation of the Clifford tree. So it makes sense why Julius returned as a child, supposedly unable to use magic, when in reality it only took Lucius a few seconds to regain his full power, just as we saw against Damnatio. And that's it, those were all major events that were probably caused by Lucius controlling Julius. We have a few more minor points, but we'll mention them all in another time in a bigger video, and that will release when Black Clover manga returns with the new Black Clover chapter. That's it for today folks, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to smash the like button and if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell turned on. See you guys in the next video, yummy out.